Alright. All praises, honor, and glory be to the Most High God, Yahweh, Baha Shem, Hamashayak, Yahweh Shah, the sons of Jacob Tulsa. We come out here to teach the 12 tribes scattered abroad and exhort them to repentance under the name of Yahweh, Wah Yahweh Shah, right? I want to start this off by giving a real life account of something that happened to me, right? So, I'm working this job, right? I had two jobs at the time, right? Because I'm trying to make it happen, man. You got to put the damn work in. So I got two jobs at the time. And uh, what's up, man? We got Esau out here acting tough, bumping money bag, yo. Uh, dude, look, dude, dude look like he living life on edge. <laughs> You don't want to mess with his kind, man. But. <laughs> he might pull out the. But. <laughs> hey, he'll throw it all away right now. Yeah. Okay. But I want to start this off with a, a true account of something that happened to me, right? I was working two jobs and I was working. And they called me into the office one day, random tip. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, as Israelites, we don't, we don't work the Sabbath day. We keep the Sabbath day holy and we don't work. So they called me to the office and they sat me down and they got two sisters right there. And I'm, and they, I'm sitting right here and they right there. And they kind of got that look on their face. And I'm kind of like, mm what it's finna be like it's it's weird right now you know what's this all about they basically start breaking down how like you know if you're gonna continue working here you're gonna have to work on saturday and i'm like nah you you must have forgot we already talked about that we already i told y'all this up front you don't remember me saying that already they like well <clears throat> if you're gonna continue working here you gonna have to work on Saturday. And I'm like, so we can't, it ain't nothing we can do. We can't switch it out. Can't, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to finesse it. I'm trying to make something shake. I'm like, so we can't kind of, they like, they acting like Esau at this point. I think they had got the, the order straight from Esau because they whole demeanor was like, there's nothing we can do. And I'm like, so really, Really, what I was faced with was a decision, right? You got two choices, right? I could have, I could have been like, "All right, man, I need the money. I need the money real bad. I need this job. It was paying good too, and they was giving me hours. I needed that, but I was faced with the decision of, you know." Work on the Saturday or don't work on the Saturday. Defile the Sabbath or don't defile the Sabbath. And I sat there and I meditated and they just looking at me. And I had to, you know, I had to make the right decision. I'm like, well, I guess this is it. You dig what I'm saying? I had to get up out of there, shake the spot. Because when you present it with the two choices, you got to make the right choice every time, man. It don't matter what it's going to cost you, man. That's part of our suffering for, suffering for Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Right. That's part of our persecution, man. It is what it is, man. I'm going to bounce back. I'm going to do better. I'm going to make... That ain't going to stop me, man. That's right. You can't let things like that stop you because you're going to have setbacks, man. You're going to have inconveniences. You're going to have difficulties, obstacles in the path, man. You got to remain diligent. That's something you got to do. When things like that happen, you can't allow that to discourage you, right? But the part I want to highlight about that is uh, it come down to two choices. Get that Deuteronomy 30 and 15. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. See, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments. It says, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away 
or worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God with all, and that thou mayest ab obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, and that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord thy God swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So the Most High gave you two choices, man. Right? He said, you can either, he said, I, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. What is that? A blessing if you keep the commandments. Life if you keep the commandments. You can prolong your days if you keep the commandments, right? You cleave on to him by keeping the commandments, by obeying God, by walking in his commandments. Or you can, you, you, you dig what I'm saying? You can, you can choose the other choice, man. You can choose sin. You can choose to disobey God. You can choose death, right? That's the choice that is set before you. It's like fire and water. Whichever you reach your hand out to touch, it's your choice, though. You dig what I'm saying? You touch the, you touch the water, you're going to be cleansed. But if you touch the fire, you're going to get burnt. That's just what it is. And as you see, he had a choice. That was a choice that a lot of men in different scenarios have. You can either sin or keep the commandments. Right. And that's the, that's the whole point of this right now. Because it often comes like life. I mean, this walk is some brothers always say. It's not that it, it's not easy, but it is simple. It's not easy, but it is simple. Right. He just gave you two choices, man. That's all it is. Two choices. That's what every situation comes down to, man. It's either sin or don't sin, man. That's what it's going to come down to in the end, too. Um, give, give for me, Baba Kasha. Please, you ask these 12 and 14. A lot of these spiritual dilemmas that we up against, man, these temptations, these trials, when you're being tested, it come down to two choices, man. You either sin or you don't sin. Mighty Officer Mahar, he always spit this proverb, man. When in doubt, keep the commandments. See, brothers are already familiar with that proverb. When in doubt, keep the commandments. It don't get no much wiser than that. It don't get much. You, you, can't, you can't come against that proverb, man. You keep that with you, you're going to do all right. You got that? This is Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Bring it out. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. See, God is going to bring all your works into judgment, whether they be good or whether they be evil. So you got to be circumspect about the choices that you're making and the things that you're doing, because it comes down to two choices, man. You dig what I'm saying? They come down to two choices, man. Is it? First off, this is elementary school teaching right here. This is elementary school teaching right here. When you, when you do what you do, you out here doing your thing, whatever you're doing. You just remember, you do whatever you want to do, but just remember, God is going to judge you for everything you're doing. But also, you, if you a righteous person, you a man or woman of God, Everything you do, you should be considering whether whether it's a sin or not. Like, damn, if I do this, am I going to transgress God's commandments? Give me Proverbs 3, Bible Show. All right, I appreciate you. Yes, sir. All right, God, this is the book of, this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, and verse 21. It says, and if ye walk contrary unto me and, you, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues unto you according to your sins there's a lot of people walking contrary to god walking against god they're walking against the love of god 
and the Most High has brought to them seven times more sins or plagues according to the sins that they have done. So you don't want to walk contrary to God. You want to walk with God. That's right. And how do you walk with God? By walking in righteousness. What is walking in righteousness? By keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. So you got to learn how to walk with God. All the prophets walked with God. Christ walked with God. How do you walk with God? Keep the commandments. Hey, can I get one more precept? Let me get uh, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, King. Yes, sir. And uh, 2. Yeah, um, yeah, we're going to start at verse 3. We're going to keep reading though. This is 1 John 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. So this is how you know if you know God, by keeping the commandments. Come on. He that say, if I know him and keep him not his commandments, is a liar. It's very simple. If you say you know God, but you don't keep his commandments, the Bible said you are a liar. And all liars shall have their part that burneth in the lake of fire. Go ahead. And the truth is not in him. The Bible said if you don't keep the commandments and you say you know him, he said that you are a liar and the truth is not in you. Come on. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. So if you keep the commandments, the love of God is perfected in you. Come on. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So you, if you say you know him, you're supposed to walk even as he walked. Christ walked with God. And how did Christ walk with God? By keeping the commandments. That's right. Come. Excellent point. Right? So, I like what you brought out at the first. It said, um, Leviticus 26, right? You got, you got two choices, man. Two choices. You gonna walk contrary to God or is you gonna walk with God? Right? Like our mighty forefathers, right? You gonna walk contrary to God or you gonna walk with God? Right? come down to two choices man so as you're doing your daily walk slow down man slow down and observe man and really be circumspect like them this choice this action this thing that i'm finna say you know if i go for if i if i proceed with this line of thinking if i proceed with this way this action if i say this is it gonna cause is it gonna cause me to be in error is it going to cause me to slip? Is it going to cause somebody else to be in error? Is it going to cause somebody else to slip? Those are the type of things you should be predicating your decisions off of, man. Right? So, can you give me a uh, Yeah, get that problem. This is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. Yep. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So it say, in all thy in all thy paths. What does it say? Say it again. It says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So you gotta sit there and meditate before you do things, man. We not out here winging it, man. We men of the Lord. We moving with precision and thought. What's that? Verse thirteen. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. And the man that gets understanding. So we're really putting you on game how to be happy. Because a lot of sorrows be like, why did I do that shit? That came from sinning. Why did I mess with that shorty? That Because it probably was an adulterous situation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, man. Everybody that's been smoking weed, they, they start complaining how they, they down in life, how they lazy, how they don't have a car, how they don't have a house. A lot of that sorrow comes from sinning. And if you actually read what the bible said it says get to the plow what is it no go uh, go watch the ant out uh the ant, thou, sluggard. thou sluggard right that's the bible it says happy he's like his wisdom because he's going to utilize that and he's going to be up he's going to be up right i mean if you apply wisdom man you're going to be happy man but that's your choice are you going to apply wisdom or are you not going to apply wisdom you see now how a lot of things come down to two choices man if you're feeling uh, depressed, like the brother used as an example, what caused it? A lot of things are cause and effect as well. And it come down to two choices, man. You're going to continue to make the same decisions that led to your, to your downfall, to your depression, to your anxiety, to your, to, uh, 
Hey, whatever, whatever, whatever problem you having, man. If you having health issues, are you gonna? It's your choice, you know. Uh, 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 your choices form your habits, and your habits form your lifestyle, right? So, if you're not pleased with your lifestyle, you might want to take a look at your habits. And if you're not pleased with your habits, it goes back to your choices, man. Make better decisions, you're gonna form better habits. Form better habits, you're gonna live a better lifestyle, right? This is John 3, verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Woo! Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It give you two choices, man. You either believe in him and have eternal life, or you don't believe in him and you perish. You dig what I'm saying? You don't want to be the one who didn't believe on Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who the world calls Jesus Christ, and walk in the way and walk in his teachings, right? You don't want to be that person, right? You don't want to face that condemnation. Because he, do, he that does not believe on Yahweh Shah is condemned already. You have not even entered into life. You have not touched the tip of the iceberg, man. You ain't even started yet, man. You ain't even begun. You got something? It's your choice, bro. This is Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Yep. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So just because Christ came, gave us grace, got the opportunity to get ourselves right, that doesn't mean to sin. That, that's not like like what soldier uh, Malachi is going over is we got to choose life now. Right. While you have a chance because the Lord and Savior gave you a second chance to choose life. Don't choose death twice. You a double. <laughs> Am I wrong? Whoa! Stop choosing twice, death twice. Jeez. I got to know. This is Romans chapter two, 12, verse 2. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Choose the commandments. This is Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And it says... 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Yahweh Christ our Lord. So like the mighty soldier Zion brought out, you got the choice, man. You've been given a second chance through the redemption of the blood of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Now, do we, do we take this as a, an occasion to the flesh? Is that what grace is all about? So you can do whatever the hell you want to do? No, that's not what it's about. God forbid. No, that's not what we do. God forbid. La a. What do we do? We walk in the newness of life. Because we were dead and Hamashiach died for us. And now we are alive through, through, through his sacrifice, right? Now we live unto righteousness, man. Don't choose death twice. That was hot. Don't choose death twice, man. Choose life, man. And that go back to the law, man. He said life and death before you, man. Choose life. Keep God's commandments. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul. He that despiseth his ways shall die. So it's a choice. You know what I'm saying? What, what's that word called? I think it's like juxtapose, where it's like set two things against each other. You got life and you got death. It's your choice, man. No, it's like it. Just, Cause you said Romans eight verse thirty four. Because you're weighing it out. This is Romans chapter eight verse. Uh, let's start at verse thirty eight. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come. And and talking about nor things present, you see strip strip clubs present. You see rappers present. You seen these cars that you got to do some gay stuff present? This stuff present, it's not worth it. It says, no present, no things to come, no height, no depth, nor any other creature shall, shall be able to separate us from the love of God. How do you love God? First John 5 and 3, keep the commandments, which is in Yahweh Shai Christ, our Lord. So that you cannot, it's not worth it. Weigh it out in your mind 
and you will always find out through and through that Christ wins and God wins. That's right. Choose life, man. Choose choose life through your how or why your how side, man. This is First Peter two verse twenty one. For even here and two were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Verse twenty two. Who did no sin, neither was God found in, found in his mouth. So a typical thing you always hear a Christian say is, we're all sinners. How do you, you, you call yourself a follower of Christ and you call yourself a sinner when Christ did no sin and we should be following his steps? That's right. All right. Hey, it's a, uh, damn, that was hot. It was something I wanted out of there. Can I see that again? Where is it? For hereunto were ye called, because Hamashiach also suffered for us. Hamashiach suffered, and we should follow his example and suffer for his sake, man. So you can either you can either suffer for the ministry's sake, for God's sake, for the sake, for righteousness' sake, or you can suffer for your own sins, man, and die. You dig what I'm saying? And be judged again. You're gonna raise up and be be raised up and be condemned again, man. All because you abused his ways, man. Now you gotta now you gotta know pain after death. Just think about that. Let that sink in. Pain after death. Right? The most high, he can touch you. He can touch you in the spirit world. Yeah. Talk about it. Talk about it. They ain't feeling me, bro. They ain't, they ain't hear you, man. Um, you get one. Most high gonna hit where it hurt. Bro. You can't evade the most high. It's not a boxing match. This is Romans 5, verse 21. That as sin have reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord. This is Romans 5, verse 21. That as sin have reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, our Lord. Hey Amen. Sin reigned unto death in our mortal bodies, right? But grace is going to veil unto life. You dig what I'm saying? So, but it's your choice if you're going to choose sin or if you're going to choose life through that sacrifice of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. I know I'm repeating the same thing over and over. And you're going to be faced with the same scenario over and over. It's always going to come down to two choices. You feel me? So you can choose life or death. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, 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 give me uh, Luke 18 and 8. Right? It's all on you what you want to do, man. Well, we got her to do... We encourage you to repent to God. But I ain't gonna force you to do nothing. And I don't want you to do nothing you don't want to do. Do your thing, man. But you're gonna be judged for everything that you do. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall you find faith on the earth. So when he come, do you want to be found faithful? Do you want to be found doing what he told you to do, man? Or do you want to be found lacking? Do you want to be found not knowing what's going on? Do you want to be caught off guard? Do you want to be as the servant who started uh, drinking and beating the servants? And, you know, he thought he thought the Lord was tarrying in his coming. And then the Lord pull up like a thief in the night and catch you slipping, man. And you falling away and you playing with this grace. No. You want to be found faithful. You want to be found doing what you're supposed to do. You want to have many works stacked up. Like, like, yeah, Lord, I did, I did my best. You want to leave it all on the line, man. You want to give it all you got, man. That's what I want to do. Like I say, I, I can't force y'all to do nothing, though. That's what I want to do, though. You feel me? That's just me, though. It's your choice, though. You got your own choice to make. You got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's your thing, you know? But if you on the same type of time I'm on, hey, tap in. You feel me? Give me um, Matthew 24, 13. 
This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So that's the choice too. Give up faith or endure unto the end and be saved, man. I'm going to keep going to scriptures and giving you the same ultimatum. Because that's what it's going to come down to, man. The faith is your shield. If you let, if you fall away from the faith, you ain't got, you ain't got nothing. Your whole armor is uh, compromised, right? You're, you're susceptible to attacks. You wide open. You have no defense. That faith, that faith gonna carry, man. Right? That faith is gonna carry, man. You guys, but if you choose to not have faith, you as good as finished, man. It's your choice to keep the faith. You dig what I'm saying? And you gotta diligently apply yourself to keep the faith, man. You gotta really, you gotta really keep it up. You gotta really be on it like you want it, man. You gotta be reading these scriptures, man. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How you gonna hear the word of God if you ain't up in the book? That's right. It ain't gonna go like that, man. You are gonna find yourself questioning things that the answer is in the book. Stop questioning and go read. It says, seek and you shall find. Hebrews 11, 11. Hebrews 11, 11. Big bro. Come on, Ola. Two minutes. You cool? I hey, catch us next time, though, bro. Hello, y'all. Peace. Come holler next time. This is Hebrews 11, verse 11. Bring it out. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. This is, this is Hebrews 11, verse 13. Bring it out. These all died in faith. That was kind of fire. Yeah. This, <laughs> we can get that too. Yeah, right. yeah, let me do that first. This is Hebrews 11, verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. All right. So, hey, strangers, we strangers and pilgrims on this earth. You know what I'm saying? We here temporarily. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We seeking it. The other side. Yeah. And we right. know it's there. Right. That's right. So this is Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that did diligently seek him. So we must believe in the Most High God, Yahweh, that he is a rewarder that first he exists, right? Because a lot of people don't believe that he exists. And if they really believed, their actions would show that he really exists, right? They wouldn't just speak about it, they would show it, right? Because a lot of people, they they talk about it, but th their words, what does it say? Uh, they show they, they show by words, but not by deeds, roughly paraphrasing. Um, but people would really if they really believed in God, they would show in their actions and not just in their words. So you must believe that he is, first off. Second, you must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when you go and you pray to the Most High God, you must believe that you will receive what you pray for because we keep the commandments of God. Did you have something? If you look at 1 John chapter 3, uh, it's like 1 John chapter 2. Wait. 3 and 22? Yes, sir. First John chapter three. This is First John three verse twenty two. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments. It's that simple. It's that simple. So we keep His commandments. We we know that He exists. He set forth these commandments. We're not gonna let nobody tell us that the Most High God don't exist. We're not gonna let nobody tell us that His laws are done away with. We just not. We're not gonna. We can. We believe. That he sent his son to die for us, and his son kept the commandments, and we were walking just like his son is. That's right. 
Gun. This is Matthew chapter 25 verse 13. Watch therefore, watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is that a man traveleth into a far country, who called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and another two, and another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded the same with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them, so that he that had received five talents came and brought the other five talents. So the kingdom of heaven is being compared to a man who took a journey into a far country and he left his servants with his goods and he told them he left his servants with his good. One of the servants went and he traded and he got more. He multiplied his talents, right? Another one went and he traded and he multiplied his talents, right? The other one, he buried his talent in the earth and he ain't do nothing with it. Keep reading. And he had received, and so he that have received five talents came and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Right. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Right. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler of many things. Enter thou into joy of thy Lord. See? You got a choice. Are you going to be faithful over what the Lord gave you? Are you going to put it to work? Are you going to use your talents? You do what I'm saying and enter into the joy of the Lord. You want to be called a good and faithful servant. It's all on you. It's your choice. He also that have received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done. Good and faithful servant. See, that brother, he didn't have as much as the brother with five talents. He didn't have as many talents. He didn't, you know what I'm saying? But he still went to work with what he had. And he was still called a good and faithful servant. And he entered into the joy of the Lord. Thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler of many things. Enter thou into joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathereth where thou hast not stored, stored, And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talents in the earth. Lo, there thou hast dined that that sloggy. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talents in the earth. Lo, thou, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, I gather where I have strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talents from him and give it to him was to have ten talents. So he gave instructions. He said, man, I gave you this. When I came back, you should have gave me more than what I gave you at the first. You should have more. You ain't do nothing with what I gave you. That's problematic. What did you say to him? It said, his Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. Do you want to be called a wicked and slothful servant? The power is in your hands. The choice is yours. It's two choices. It says, 
wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore have put the my money in the with to the exchangers. And then at my coming I shall have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talents from him, and give it to him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the upright, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So you can either enter into the joy of the Lord. You can either enter into, enter into the joy of the Lord, or you can be cast in the outer darkness, where there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and all, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep of his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was... Uh, 36. Uh, 25, 36. Mm -mm. It says... Okay, I'll read. It says, For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. So all of these are acts of love, right? All of these things are in the power of your hands to do, right? To your fellow kinsmen. Because as much as you do it unto them, you're doing it unto Hamashiach, right? You're going to get to that. But it's your choice whether you want to do these things. Are you too busy to do these things? Are you too proud to do these things? Verse 37. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when we when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee. Or, My fault. They like, when, 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 we see, when, when did that happen? You know, we didn't see you hungry. We didn't see you thirsty. We didn't see you naked. You wasn't sick. You wasn't in jail. Or thirsty and gave thee drink. When saw we a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee. Or when saw we thee sick and, or in prison on and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Barely I say unto you, And as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these of my brethren, ye have done it unto me. He say for a fact, if you have done it one of, to the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then he shall say unto them on the left hand, To pour from me ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me not, no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, or and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, or did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Barely I say unto you, and as much as ye did it not, on to one of the least of these did ye not to me and these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into the eternal life these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous unto life eternal the left hand or the right hand did you perform these acts while you was on earth while you had the grace the breath the opportunity the ability or did you neglect these things because you you felt that you had better things to do Maybe you was too busy with your business. Maybe you was too busy doing this or that. Who knows? But when the time come, it ain't going to matter. He just told you how it was going to go. He ain't going to ask you, well, okay, I kind of understand. You, you had this going. No. He said you didn't do this or you did do this. You did, you did, you did righteousness or you did unrighteousness. It's going to be two choices, man. This is 2 Ezra 9 verse 5. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonders and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. 
and every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in the land and within my borders for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Hey, it's your choice, man. It say many are called, but few are chosen. You dig what I'm saying? And these things that was listed in, in, in Matthew 25, and these things that was just written here, these things that's written in the law, in the prophets, in the epistles, in the gospels, these is the things these are the things that you got to take heed to, man. These are, the, these are the decisions you get to make. You get to get to do these things, perform these these acts. It say, he that doeth righteousness is is righteous, if I uh, roughly paraphrase me. That was very roughly paraphrasing. He that doeth righteousness is, he that doeth righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. That's what I meant to say. Um, you dig what I'm saying? Don't be deceived, man. Perform these acts of love. Be selfless, man. And and, and and keep it going for a long time, man, as long as you live, man. Because that's the, my captain told me something cold the other day, man. The biggest the biggest thing is the test of time. You can go hard for you can go hard for a few for a few days, a few months, a few years. You can go hard for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Can you endure until the end? That's right. That's what it's gonna come down to. You gotta perform these acts, man. And it's say the ones that's going to be saved is going to be saved by their faith and their works, right? And that's who's going to be preserved from these evils. So, I got one more. Revelation 20, Bible shop. Hey, it's show choice, man. I'm only bringing these things out to you because all of these things are in the power of your hand. You sitting there on your phone or you either sitting on, at your computer, however you watching this. Lord willing, you see this. You know, the people that see it, that's who it's for, man. This, that's what this message is for, man. All these things are in the power of your hand, right? I know what I'm going to do, but I'm just giving you the choices, man. You got two choices, man. You can do these things or you can not do them. You can face the judgment. You can get the reward or you can get the uh, curse. This is Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Hey, it say the ones who don't take the mark, the ones who, you feel me? Give it a word. It's a word. I got two minutes. It say the ones who don't take the mark, you feel me? The ones who endure until the end, and you know it's your choice whether you're going to do it or not. If you're going to obey these commandments or not until the end, man. If you're going to worship the beast or not, if you're going to take the mark or not, it's, what's up? It's, it's up to you, man. That's the only reason I'm bringing these things out. Do you want to, do you want to be a, do you want to take part in the first resurrection? Where, on, on whom the second death have no power over you? Or do you want to take part in the second death? It's your choice. It's decisions, 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 decisions. It's two choices. Like I was going to say, is it worth it? Like, is it worth it to sin, to hold that grudge against your brother? Is it worth it to commit that adultery? Is it really worth it? Because a lot of times, if you really think about it, you like, damn, that was not worth it. When all said and done, when that, when that, uh, that small little gratitude that you could have done, you would, you're gonna want to wish that you did it, right? You're gonna wish that you went out camp. You're gonna wish you gave more charity gonna wish you said not said that to your brother to the widow to the fatherless child you're gonna wish that you didn't say that so is it worth it a lot of times in the moment it might seem like it's worth it but then at the end you're like dang fame wasn't worth it and how many how many rappers got to come out 
after 50 years of the game and say this shit ain't worth it for you to understand it ain't worth it. How many people got to kill themselves that are rich to understand that don't bring you happiness? How many? How many? Is it worth it, bro? That's what I'm saying. It's not worth it. And a lot of times that faint, that, that, that hurt that you feel was that old man trying to come back, bro. It's that, it's that, oh, man. Dang, I really wanted to smoke, man. Ah, I really don't. You know what I'm saying? It says it's a, it's a constant battle with your spirit and your flesh. That's a constant battle. And for the people that are strong, they're going to fight. Hey, man, so I encourage you to keep love until the end, man. If you've done somebody wrong, go make it right. If somebody did you wrong and you got that grudge, go holler at them and make it right, man. The time is short, and at the time, the days are limited, man. Pretty soon, it's going to be all bad, and it's going to be too late to right your wrongs, man. So I encourage you to keep love until the end. And, uh, hey, man, keep working. <laughs> work, work, work diligently, man. And it's been uh, Sons of Jacob Tulsa. All praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God. Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashayak, Yahweh, Shah, Shalom.